We call it the realms of hell, the underworld, or the abyss. Regardless of the name, it is acknowledged as the final destination for those who have departed. Yet, in every corner of existence, an authoritative ruler emerges. A ruler of the underworld that is named after it, or maybe a ruler who even owns a ferocious, massive three-headed dog that does what he says. Perhaps a ruler who believes to be a fallen angel. Get ready, hunters. These are the three lethal and legendary rulers of the underworld in mythology. Imagine an entity embodying the essence of life and death. Allow me to introduce the inaugural legendary sovereign, the awe-inspiring and all-powerful Hell. Hell is a figure from Norse mythology. She occupies a pivotal role in the cosmology of the Norse universe. She is a central figure in the afterlife, presiding over a realm that bears her name. Hell is described as a being with a dual nature reflecting her parentage. Half of her body is alive and vibrant, while the other half is decaying and lifeless. This unique duality mirrors the contrasting aspects of life and death. Her countenance is often depicted as stern and somber, befitting her role as the ruler of the underworld, also known as Helheim or the realm of the dead in Norse mythology. Hell governs over those who did not die in battle and have not earned a place in the halls of the heroic afterlife, Valhalla. Her power lies in the ability to maintain the delicate balance between life and death. Hell has the authority to welcome souls into her realm or release them back to the living world. She possesses a unique skill set, not characterized by physical prowess or combat skills like other Norse deities. Instead, her strength lies in her wisdom and understanding of the intricate web of life, death, and destiny. One of Hell's notable feats is her role in the Ragnarok, the apocalyptic event in Norse mythology. According to prophecy, she will lead an army of the dead during this cataclysmic battle, demonstrating her significance in the cosmic order. Hell's origins are rooted in both the natural and divine realms. Born of Loki, a god, and Angerboa, a giantess, she embodies the blending of divine and primal forces. This mixed parentage symbolizes the interconnectedness of the divine and chaotic aspects within the Norse cosmos. In Norse mythology, Hel serves as a reminder of the transient and cyclical nature of life, reinforcing the concept of rebirth and renewal. Her presence adds depth to the Norse understanding of the cosmos, illustrating that death is an integral part of the cosmic order. Interesting fact, one intriguing aspect of Hel is her ambiguous moral stance. Unlike many other deities in Norse mythology, she is not inherently good or evil. Instead, Hell represents the impartiality and inevitability of death, challenging conventional notions of divine morality within the pantheon. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing, it's free, and you can unsubscribe later. Prepare yourselves for the arrival of the next legendary ruler. Whispers speak of powers that rival the gods of heavens. Behold the almighty Hades. Hades is one of the principal deities of the Pantheon, ruling over the underworld in Greek mythology. He is the eldest son of the Titans Cronus and Rhea, making him a sibling to Zeus, Poseidon, Hera, Demeter, and Hestia. After the defeat of the Titans in the Titanomachy, Hades, Zeus, and Poseidon divided the realms of the cosmos, with Hades becoming the lord of the underworld. Hades is often depicted as a solemn and stern figure, befitting his role as the ruler of the dead. He is commonly portrayed with a dark beard, wearing regal attire and a crown that signifies his divine authority. His countenance reflects both the somber nature of the underworld and the seriousness with which he administers justice to the deceased. As the ruler of the underworld, Hades governs the realm of the dead, ensuring the order and balance of the afterlife. His power is immense, particularly in his control over the souls of the departed. Hades possesses the Helm of Darkness, which grants him invisibility, adding an extra layer of mystique to his character. While not as overtly powerful in battle as his brothers Zeus and Poseidon, Hades' dominion over the afterlife instills fear and reverence among both gods and mortals. One of Hades' notable feats is his role in the abduction of Persephone, the daughter of Demeter. Hades managed to take Persephone to the underworld, leading to Demeter's grief and the changing of seasons. The compromise eventually reached allowed Persephone to spend part of the year in the underworld and part on Earth, symbolizing the cyclical nature of life, death, and rebirth. In Greek mythology, the underworld is not a place of punishment but a destination for all souls regardless of their deeds in life. Hades, in this context, symbolizes the impartiality and inevitability of death, ensuring the proper functioning of the afterlife. He is often associated with a three-headed dog named Cerberus. Cerberus serves as the guardian of the underworld, preventing the living from entering and keeping the dead from leaving. 
The three heads of Cerberus are believed to represent the past, present, and future, or birth, youth, and old age. Interesting fact, one interesting aspect of Hades is his relatively neutral moral stance. While often portrayed as stern and unyielding, he is not inherently malevolent. Unlike other gods associated with specific domains, Hades is tasked with the responsibility of maintaining the balance of the afterlife, emphasizing his role as a just and impartial ruler rather than a malicious deity. Brace yourselves for the arrival of the third legendary ruler, renowned as a tempter wielding godly powers. Behold thee, Satan. Satan, a central figure in various religious traditions, is often associated with rebellion and opposition to divine authority. The origin myth of Satan varies among religious texts, with a common narrative arising from the Abrahamic traditions, particularly Christianity. In this context, Satan is often regarded as a fallen angel who rebelled against God's rule, leading to his expulsion from heaven. In Christian tradition, he is often depicted as a malevolent being with horns, hooves, and a forked tail, drawing inspiration from medieval art and literature. However, interpretations differ, and Satan's appearance can also be portrayed as a more subtle and alluring figure, reflecting his role as a tempter. Satan is commonly considered a ruler of the realm of hell or the underworld. His power is attributed to his cunning intellect, persuasive abilities, and his capacity to lead astray. Unlike many mythological deities, Satan's power is often portrayed as indirect, influencing human choices and actions rather than exercising direct control over cosmic forces. Satan's skills lie in manipulation and temptation. His ability to exploit human weaknesses and sow discord is often emphasized in religious texts. While not possessing the traditional divine powers seen in other mythological figures, Satan's influence over the moral choices of individuals is a recurring theme. One of Satan's prominent feats, as depicted in various religious texts, is his role in tempting Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. In Christian theology, Satan takes the form of a serpent and persuades them to eat the forbidden fruit, leading to their expulsion from paradise. This event is seen as the origin of sin and the introduction of suffering into the human experience. Satan's origins are intricately tied to divine narratives, especially in Abrahamic religions. In Christian tradition, Satan is considered a fallen angel originally created by God but choosing to rebel against divine authority. This theological perspective frames Satan's existence as initially divine before his defiance led to his transformation into a malevolent figure. In religious narratives, Satan's role is often that of an adversary to divine order and human morality. His rebellion against God and subsequent attempts to lead humans astray serve as cautionary tales about the consequences of disobedience and moral transgressions. Satan's character symbolizes the inherent struggle between good and evil, emphasizing the importance of free will and moral choices in the human experience. Symbolically, Satan is often associated with the temptations and challenges that individuals face in their spiritual journey. His presence in religious texts serves as a moral and spiritual antagonist, urging believers to resist the allure of sin and remain steadfast in their faith. Interesting fact, one interesting aspect of Satan's portrayal is the evolution of his character across different cultures and time periods. While often depicted as a malevolent force in medieval European art, some interpretations highlight Satan as a more nuanced figure exploring themes of existential rebellion, questioning authority, and challenging oppressive systems. Satan excels in the art of temptation, but what if I told you there are other devils even more potent in bending others to their will? We refer to them as the manipulators. If delving into the intriguing world of manipulators piques your interest, click the video on the left. For a broader exploration of mythologies, check out the one on the right. If you enjoy this content, kindly show your support by giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel for future updates. Feel free to share your suggestions for the next mythical topic in the comments below. Thank you for watching.